objects, and engaging and squeezing your glutes, driving your hips up into the air. Um, a couple of little fundamental things as easy. The, does anybody in here take the bar out of the rack themselves? Everybody has someone who lifts off for them? Oh, uh, uh, what is it? It's a yes or no question. Yeah. Yes, there are people that train themselves. <laughs> okay. Um, do you train by yourself? Uh, ninety. Yeah, ninety percent of the time. Yeah. Okay. So you might have to reset your bench. Um, people who train by themselves, um, or you can buy a set of mono hooks. I have those mono hooks in my rack, which are fucking awesome um, because I can I can take the weight out in my setup versus having to press the weight out and then get into it. I find a lot of people really, they have a great setup and then they completely right. blow it up when they take the weight out. Because um, the truth of the matter is when you take weight out of the bar, you're not lifting it out, you're extending it. It's a tricep extension. That's how the weight's coming up. And if you do this, you're loosening up your lats. Your, your bench is all in your setup and your tightness. So you want to be, when you're benching, and I've done a shit ton of benching, just like this. I would, before competitions, I'd literally be sitting on the edge of the bed just doing this. Because that's what I'm always trying to do. I'm squeezing my glutes, I'm engaging my posterior chain, I'm driving my hips up, and I'm trying to meet the bar at its highest point. So I would practice my forearm a lot, just sitting in a chair, um, I would just get that pattern over and over again. So one of the big things too is always, it's not flattering, but you always want to also when you're, how we've really trained each other um, on the lift off. Once I inhale, and I've done this, it's interesting. Um, Carlos Moran just posted a video, I don't know if he was squatting, but he gave me a little credit. I don't know how many reps he did, but it's pretty impressive. And he did it on one breath. That's one thing I, I was taught when a, a young lifter is, uh, maybe not young, but when I was starting, to hold your breath. Because once you exhale and try to inhale again, you'll never get as tight again. As for your power lifter, you're stretching, you're going for a max rep, you want to hold that air. So when you take the weight out, if you, if you have someone lifting off of you, you don't want to exhale again. So how we do it is uh, we would count one, two, and on the inhale is when the liftoff would come. Now I'm not telling you have to do this, I'm telling you what's really worked well for me and the people I've coached that have become very successful. Um, again, it's one, two, and again, you'll see, I fill up my stomach because I'm trying to get bigger and take out that range of motion um, versus breathing into my chest, and that's where that whole Eastern philosophy comes from, breathing in through the core, getting into the belly, getting a big, deep breath. So one, two, extend the bar out nice and tight, and that's the upper body setup. I also explain um, how I'll set my feet up, and uh, I will. I lift my big toe up in my shoe, and that is a powerlifting cue that's always worked for me. I do that when I squat and I deadlift also. It just keeps me on my heels and to the outside of my feet. Some people drive forward with their toes. Some people try to push their toes through the floor and drive the weight back. That's fine. Um, that's a different cue. But for me, I'm kind of dumb, so I was like, ah, I just need one cue for all three lifts, keep my toe up in my shoe, because when you deadlift, it keeps you on your heels. When you bench, I bench on my heels, it keeps me on my heels, and my squat keeps me spreading the floor and on my heels, so I always keep my toe up in my shoe. Sometimes I actually do this, which is not smart, but you'll see my feet do that on my bench sometimes, because I'm just trying to lift my toes up and drive through my heels. So I'll drive through my heels, up through my uh, hamstrings, and I'll be squeezing my glutes, and my hips will be up. I'm not as tight through my lower body as completely possible. I'd say a range of one to 10, I'm probably tightness of a seven or, seven or eight when I bring the weight down. Because what I want to do is when I touch that weight and I get that call, I want to explode. So I want to ramp that seven to eight tightness up up to a 10 so I can drive my hips through the lift. Now, a lot of times people, I come very close to coming off the bench. It's my goal, I train for that. Your hips and your, your butt can move, but you have to maintain contact with the bench for it to be a good lift. So you can have some movement. Um, I know it's the, it's the same way in the USAPL. I mean, you can have movement, you just have to maintain contact. A lot of people will take it as, oh, you're lifting your butt. Yeah, I'm lifting my butt, but I'm trying to maintain contact. I will also say that I still wear my 4X singlet that I wore when I was 338, now that I'm two, whatever. Uh, and I have a black singlet because most benches are black. 
So if that's cheating, I don't know. But if you're wearing a red singlet and your butt comes off the bench, you can see it a lot different yep. than if you were in a black singlet. Now, I'm not telling everybody to cheat or to pad your ass. I'm just telling you these are, as someone who's judged also, things to consider. I mean, you're always trying to, I guess, uh, not, not bend the rules, but work inside the rules yeah. as much as possible. So I highly recommend black singlets to anybody who competes. And, um, that's really and you know, it's a little, a little not as form-fitting and a little loose, you know, might help if you're about a centimeter about the, off, off the bench. But you didn't hear that here. All right, so again, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna drive through, and then I'm gonna bring it down uh, at about a seven or eight, and I'm gonna explode up at about a 10. So I'll go through my setup now, kind of talk through it. So again, grip width is varied. I'm just gonna take, for me, this is kind of a medium grip. I'm gonna dig, and this bench is, Donnie, sorry, your bench is a little slippery. I know it works good when you get a good sweat. <clears throat> All right, so I'm digging my shoulders in, and when I dig my shoulders in, I don't want them up in my traps. You want your, you want to pull your shoulders back into your lats, into your back. You want them down, not up. So you want to squeeze your shoulders back. I mean, look at the difference in the range of motion from here to here. That's a good three inches. Just going from here to here. This is the optimal uh, position to have your shoulders and back while you're benching. It takes out range of motion, plus you're a lot tighter. So at my back dug in, you'll notice I start tucking my elbows. I start turning my elbows in. Now, another thing I'll teach is a lot of times gear lifting has really screwed up the bench press for raw lifters. I find a lot of people will start over tucking their elbows. You want your elbows to stay in line with your forearms. I bench suicide grip and I still live to tell about it, so if anybody tells you not to, um, if that's how you bench, that's fine. If it's not, it's not. I find that I can keep the bar in line with my wrist as I keep it in the palm of my hand. And I feel like I have more pressing power that way. But, so for me to turn, I'll take the, and all I'm doing when I say turn my elbows in is this. This will help engage your lats to bring the weight down. Now, other people will call that bending the bar. That cue doesn't work for me when I talk about bending the bar. Because that, to me, that all that really is is turning your elbows in. Now when I bring the weight down, I'm not trying to bring it like this, but I'm trying to get my elbows in line with my wrists. Keep everything in one line over. So again, my back squeeze, then you'll see me turn my elbows in, and then I'll extend the weight. Into my lats, shoulders pull back, squeeze the bar. Now, get my feet in a comfortable, well, an uncomfortable position. And now I'm squeezing my hips and my glutes as high as I can, and I can still feel my butt making contact with the bench. Now, if your butt, if you squeeze and you can lift your butt off the bench, your butt's gonna come off the bench with max weight. Because when you're if you're driving hard, you're gonna be able to come off. So the ultimate thing to do is find a position where no matter what you do, you can't get your butt off the bench. Because then when you're taking the lift, your butt won't come off the bench. Another thing I see people do, never take a lift with the weight in the back of the rack. It's a game of inches. All those little things count. Always make sure the weight is up in the front of the rack. So now I'm tight, my toes are up, I'm tight for my hamstrings, I'm squeezing my glutes, my hips are up, I'm gonna breathe into my belly, I'm gonna extend the weight out, I'm gonna bring it down, and I'm gonna explode up. So I'll go one, two. You see how I pop off the bench while I'm benching? I'm just driving as hard through my whole body as I can. For those of you who don't use a lot of leg drive, your legs and low back will be really sore tomorrow if you learn to engage it today. But again, to me that made the hugest difference in my life. So, 
couple things I want to make sure I don't see um, is when you take the weight out, don't come out of form. Stay in this form. Uh, let's see where your, your butt and your feet are and get everything as tight as possible. And then make sure you have a big full breath. And if you have to breathe between reps, you know, that's fine. Um, we used to hold our breath for all our reps. Just one breath uh, for all our reps. And at three, when I was 330 pounds, a lifetime asthmatic, I can hold my breath for you know five to 10 reps, so I think most people can. Once you breathe, you can't get that tightness back. Um, just my opinion. Unlike the squat where you can kind of stand and you can almost relax under the bar and take another breath, you can't really do that with the bench over you. I mean, you can relax, but you're gonna, when you, you're gonna lose that tightness, in my opinion. All right, we're gonna just start taking the bar.